In this video, we'll cover the muscles of facial expression and the muscles of mastication. Mastication is the process of chewing or grinding food. The facial muscles are subcutaneous, or just under the skin. They generally originate from the surface of the skull and insert into the connective tissue beneath the skin of the face. As you grow old, wrinkles will form perpendicularly to the fibers of the facial muscles. Now, let's cover several groups of facial muscles. The oral group, or muscles surrounding the mouth, the orbital group, or muscles associated with the eye socket, the nasal group, muscles surrounding the nose, the auricular group, or muscles surrounding the ears, and finally, muscles of the forehead and neck. Let's start with the oral group. Most of the facial muscles are positioned around the mouth, since this is the part of the face that moves the most. Firstly, there's the orbicularis oris, which encircles the mouth. It is a sphincter, aka a circular muscle that maintains constriction of an orifice or passage of the body. This muscle helps you close your mouth or pucker your lips, for instance, while whistling. It originates from the maxilla and from other muscles of the cheek and inserts into the lips. The other muscles from the oral group can be divided into an upper and lower group. The upper group includes the zygomaticus major and minor, the risorius, the levator labii superioris, the levator labii superioris alequinasi, and the levator anguli oris. The zygomaticus major and minor help lift the corners of your lips so you can smile. Whether or not you have dimples is supposedly thanks to variation in the structure of the zygomaticus major. On the other hand, the risorius muscle is involved in the fake smile. Its contraction draws back the corners of the mouth into a smile shape. However, this smile does not collaborate with the orbicularis oculi muscles, and so does not involve the skin around the eyes. Using this muscle as opposed to the zygomaticus will prevent you from getting crow's feet wrinkles, but others will judge you as being insincere. The levator anguli oris also plays a role in helping you smile by moving the corners of the mouth upwards. Meanwhile, the levator labii superioris alequi nasi, phew, that's quite a mouthful, enables a snarling expression. Actually, it's been nicknamed the Elvis muscle, since the famous American singer used it a lot. Finally, the levator labii superioris muscle elevates the upper lip. The lower group of oral muscles includes the mentalis, the depressor anguli oris, and the depressor labii inferioris. If someone can infer a displeased mental state from your face, perhaps they've noticed your mentalis muscle contracting. Your mentalis muscle is located at the furrow between your lower lip and chin and is nicknamed the pouting muscle, since it helps contract the chin when expressing displeasure. The depressor anguli oris pulls down the corners of your mouth, hence it is put to work when you frown. Meanwhile, the depressor labii inferioris draws the lower lip down and sideways. This muscle is important in kissing and playing the trumpet. So in general, the upper group is more involved in happy expressions, and the lower group is more involved in upset expressions. Let's cover the orbital group now. This group includes the orbicularis oculi, the corrugator supercilii, and the depressor supercilii. So, the orbicularis oris isn't the only muscle shaped like a donut. You also have a pair of orbicularis oculi muscles which encircle your eyelids. These muscles help you close your eyes, and again, these are sphincter muscles. The corrugator muscle pulls the eyebrow medially in most people. Finally, there is the depressor supercilii, which are thought to assist in moving and lowering the eyebrows. On to the nasal group. This group has three muscles in it. The nasalis is the largest of these muscles and can be split into the transverse nasalis and dilator nares. The transverse nasalis compresses the nares, or nostrils, while the dilator nares opens them. The procerus originates from the nasal bone and inserts into the lower medial forehead. Its contraction pulls the eyebrows downward, wrinkling the nose. Finally, there's the depressor septi nasi, which assists the alar part of the nasal eye in opening the nostrils. It runs from the maxilla to the nasal septum, the bone and cartilage separating the nasal cavity into two nostrils. Now you probably have a friend who can wiggle their ears. They can accomplish this thanks to their auricular muscles. There are three of these, the anterior, posterior, and superior auricular muscles. Finally, there is a muscle of facial expression in the forehead and another in the neck. In the forehead, we have the frontalis muscle, which raises the eyebrows and wrinkles the forehead. In the neck, we have the platysma. It has three portions, the nodular, labial, and mandibular portions. 
Only the first two are shown on this model, so here is another diagram. Activation of the platysma causes slight wrinkling of the skin over top. This action is much more extensive in grazing animals. You might notice it when a fly lands on a horse's neck and it twitches its withers in response. We've now covered the muscles of facial expression, so let's cover the muscles of mastication. These are associated with movements of the jaw. There are four of these, the temporalis, the masseter, and the medial and lateral pterygoids. The temporalis muscle closes the mouth and retracts the mandible. It originates from the temporal fossa and condenses into a tendon which connects to the mandible. The masseter is the strongest of the muscles of mastication. It can be split into two parts, the superficial masseter and the deep masseter. Both these muscles elevate the mandible to close the mouth. The pterygoids are not shown in this model, so let's look at them separately. The medial pterygoid muscle closes the jaw by elevating the mandible. It has two heads, a deep one and a superficial one. The lateral pterygoid again has two heads, a superior and an inferior one. Both heads are involved during the opening of the mouth, basically making sure the skull and jawbone are aligned properly at the temporomandibular joint. Finally, there's the buccinator. This is an accessory muscle of mastication. Located between the mandible and maxilla, this muscle pulls the cheek in towards the teeth so food doesn't accumulate there. If you like this video, like and subscribe. You can also support me by following the link to my Patreon. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment.